So the first thing you're gonna need is a pair of scissors and some junk mail. A little brush, nothing special. The longer the better, it'll be safer. And some backlapping compound. There's many different kinds. This is just the kind I have. I do like the 120 grit. It's the probably gives the best um, for just using one kind. Real mower, random tools, and a drill. Here's your bed knife. And this is your reel or cylinder. First thing you need to do is check to see if you even need to backlap. So I stick the paper in, simply turn it with my hand. It's a good idea to wear gloves. Move, move a little bit further down, try it again. Try it again. A little bit not as good there. I'm missing a little bit right in this area. Good cut, good cut. Can go back across. Good cut there, good cut. Good cut again, good cut. At this point, I would not backlap back lap my mower. <clears throat> Too much backlapping can actually cause you to have to replace parts quicker. But for, the, for this video, I'm going to go ahead and do it for you guys. This buildup of grass, I prefer to remove it. Take any kind of scraping type tool. This is nothing special. Scrape that top layer off. I'm not touching the cutting edge, just the top part. Okay? Just lightly scrape off some of the grass. If it's not caked on too bad, I like using a brass brush. Brass is more forgiving against a hardened metal, um, and it will not damage the blade as much as a steel brush would do. Once you get your blades cleaned well enough for you, remember you really just need to clean this area here. This is where you're gonna put your backlapping material so you want it kind of clean, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect, but the cleaner you get it, the better. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna adjust your bed knife to reel to have a small amount of contact if it's not. <clears throat> so on a Toro unit, this is your adjuster. There's one here, there's one just like it on the other side, okay? There's these little notches that you're gonna use. I like moving three at a time. <clears throat> so you simply take your 5 8 socket one, two, three. I like moving three, then I like going, you spin your reel to make sure that you have light contact. Okay, you'll be able to feel the resistance compared to what it was before. Okay, if you need more, I like doing three more. I can feel a lot more resistant. The, the blades and the bed knife are making more contact. Now, as I showed earlier, I really don't need to back lap, so I'm gonna back this back up six spots. Every time you move this one, 
you want to move this one the same amount. So if you did follow the original instructions I was giving, I moved this six spots in the beginning. I would have moved this one six spots. That's in a clockwise rotation. Until there's good resistance in the reel. That resistance means that there's very little to no gap or light contact between the bed knife and the reel. Okay, now we are ready to do the back lapping. So I just have a standard drill that I'm going to use to rotate the reel. I have an adapter here that I purchased, I think it was $3. It's a drill bit adapter to socket. Then I didn't actually have a socket that matched that, so I had this extra adapter. And then for the particular Toro unit, I'm using the real nut that's on the end here is 18 millimeter. I'm gonna attach that into the drill and use that to rotate the real unit. This is the location on the side that you're going to attach your socket assembly to do your, your real rotation. Then the drill will go on. Okay, the next thing you need is you'll want a small brush. Doesn't have to be anything special. The longer the handle, the safer this operation is. This just happens to be this long, the longest one that I have. So this is the one that I've started using and it's been working fine. Then you want some lapping compound. I purchased this, I think it was $20 online. It's a 120 grit which is a good medium grit. Some people like to use an 80 first, and that will give it a rougher edge. And then after using the 80 to smooth a lot of it out, they'll switch to a higher grade, like a 200, and then give it, give it a fine sharpening, I guess you would call it. I think that 120 is just that perfect middle. A lot of my friends agree that 120 is just about right if you just buy one type. Now we're actually going to begin the back lapping process. You want to get a little bit of this lapping compound. Let me show you what it looks like. On the first couple blades. So I'm just putting a little bit on the blades, nothing special. Just putting a little bit on there. It's gonna get kind of pushed into the bed knife and it's gonna be the barrier between the bed knife and the reel. And it's basically gonna act like a little bit of sandpaper to make the two mate and give them a sharper edge against each other. Just the beginning. When you hook up your reel to your, dr to your drill, you'll want to go in a clockwise rotation. The clockwise rotation will rotate your reel reverse of the direction it goes when, when it's cutting. So it will go this direction as opposed to in the direction when it's being cut. So you hook up your drill. I like to keep one hand on the drill and one hand continuously giving the real grinding compound. Now one thing you'll hear is that it's usually very loud in the beginning and that's because the lapping compound is actually making the contact between the two sets of blades 
and that's creating the noise. Once the lapping compound starts to wear away and the metal wears away a little bit, it starts becoming much quieter and the drill will not have to work as hard. Now normally when my reel needs to be sharpened, I'll do that exact same little process probably three times. That may be too much. Some people may say it's not enough. But since I'm making the video, that's how many times I do it. So like I showed you earlier, my reel didn't really need to be sharpened. Or backlapped, I should say. So I'm only doing it one time just for this video. Now that we're done backlapping, we need to clean off all the extra compound. So, I like to use the same brush, kind of cleans both of them at the same time. And just go down the blade and make sure most of the lapping compound is removed from the blade. I'm not really sure if it would hurt anything for there to be lapping compound on it when you're mowing or as you operate it but it's never a bad idea to just clean it up a little bit Now that you have it all cleaned off, you check it with another little one inch strip of paper to make sure that you're getting a good cut. Okay? If you're getting a lot of ridging or tearing, you may want to do the back lapping process again. So the last and final step you want to perform is to dry the mower. Um, just use my blower, so I'm gonna just do that. Dry it up. That's how I do it.